games, Ubuntu inside of Windows, embedded Linux devices, facial recognition for Facebook, Doom source ports, and a ton of your questions on this episode of Hack 5. This episode of Hack 5 is brought to you by Squarespace, GoDaddy, Gamefly, and viewers like you. Hello and welcome to Hack 5 Lounge Edition. My name is Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morse. And this is your weekly dose of Technolust. And we have a absolutely packed show for you guys tons tonight. Tons and tons of content. But I think we should just go ahead and get right into the big news. And that was Matt was abducted by aliens. No, he was adopted. Adopted by aliens. By aliens. Yes. They uh, came down and they were like, hey, we need a kid. And we were like, well, he's 25, but he acts like he's 12, so. 26. And their spaceship oh, broke 26. down. and. You know, Matt's a handy guy, so. And then they were just like, sorry, we're taking him. And I was like, no. It was bad. So, you know, w um, so you Matt's know not here. Matt, we look forward to seeing you again soon. Good luck with your intergalactic journeys. Um, but guess who else we have here? Dude, the check it out. Stalkers. It's the Hack Stalkers. You know, we've got, uh, I think we got six Hack Stalkers with us today. It's a Tayano 40, Lucic Wire 42, Sam Like Coke, Zane 44, and Clute Man. <laughs> If you guys haven't checked out Hackstalkers, head over to Hackstalkers.com. This Great is the stalker community. wall that we keep talking about. Let me scroll up here. And, and yeah, we really love these guys. They're a ton of fun to talk to. There's a chat room. There's webcam. And you can even watch us during the entire thing. So. Yeah. That's, that's it right there. If you see at the top here, we've got the two cams. Checks out the set here. And then, uh, you know, you can see, you know, get up in here. It's like IRC, but way cooler because it's audio video. It's, it's mad chill. I so. can't hear any audio. Uh, I turned them up, but they're just being, you know, quiet. Oh, they're really good. Anything. Nah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> awesome stuff for you guys this, uh, this week, though. We're doing some more Wii Homebrew. Oh, yeah. Tons of stuff. Hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Clute Man gets mad props for having the Hack 5 shirt on tonight. Uh, I'm going to be talking about portable Ubuntu for Windows. Ew. And then a little later on, I have the Shiva plug, I have the Fawn 2, some fun embedded devices some to get. Some Doom, I think. Uh, a round up the best Doom source. Some more Doom. Uh, mods, not source mods, uh, source ports, mm -hmm. and uh, facial recognition. What? Facial recognition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. About time, too. No, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so. So uh, tell me about this uh, running Wii games in HD. How does that work? Yeah, so there's this user on YouTube who basically posted up a whole bunch of videos of these Wii games, just regular games, you know, that you've played on your Wii, mm -hmm. and they were 720p. Oh, and everybody dude. was just like, how the fuck did you do that? What? I don't understand. So I looked it up. Turns out that you have to download a couple of tools, put them on your Wii, start downloading these games straight from your, your disc, and there you go. You can play them mm -hmm. um, under an emulator called Dolphin, which I'll be showing off next week. You can Excellent. just play them inside this emulator, and there you go. So hopefully we can get it running next week, but for now I'm going to show you how to actually set it up on your SD card. Right, because the big deal is Dolphin, awesome sounding emulator. I understand that it is really a killer uh, uh, machine-wise. I don't think it's going to run on either of our netbooks here. Probably not. Hey, It'll probably run on Darren's computer upstairs. The netbooks have taken over the hack house. I know. Yeah, where's Matt now? <laughs> Talk Our Tonka toys. toys. Yeah! Uh, <laughs> so we're going to try it on my quad core. I got, yeah. uh, you know, an SLI box with some, some NVIDIAs up in there. It's going to be good. Um, Hopefully it works. <laughs> but in order to play this, we need, it, uh, since my DVD-ROM won't just read a game disc, right. there's only like a very few select DVD-ROMs that actually uh, can read Wii games, we need to have an ISO. And the first thing I think yep. when I think ISO is, oh, let me just go over to the Pirate Bay and, and mm. download myself some you yeah, know, Smash Brothers, right? Yeah, not too right? keen on that. I hear that's illegal. Yeah, a little bit. Even if you own Smash Brothers and then you download Smash Brothers, supposedly that's not oh, how you're cool. yeah. So I'll show you how to back it up, basically. So that if you have, okay, so how do we do this? What, so like, let's get into you know, it. Like, say your brother destroys the disc, you have a backup of your game on your computer. That's good to keep in mind. Or if you just want to play it in 720p because yeah. Nintendo recycled a GameCube and called it a Wii. All right, so let's get started. So you have your SD card. Right. And it's like, you know, two gigs or whatever. You stick it into your computer and you have to download these two different files. The first one's called the WAD Manager. Mm -hmm. And that one's by a guy named um, Juan in Coco. 
<laughs> and we don't want to get into the politics of that, but we know that you guys... A little crazy. Yeah, you whatever. Know, anyway, you, I don't care. The WAD manager works for me, and it's version 1.3 if you guys are interested in it. Mm -hmm. um, and it works, so whatever. I this don't care is, who made it. It does its thing. Of course, we need to mention, this is building on the homebrew that we've been talking about for the last couple of weeks with the Wii. So, yes. you know, you got to get the homebrew so, channel. Just so go back to the last there. episode. If you haven't watched it yet, you should download it, by yeah. the way. Yeah, definitely. You know, download it. I'm watching you. There you go. Okay, the second thing you need is the Wii Disk Dumper app. Okay. What does that application do for us? Um, basically, it lets you dump uh, the different pieces of the video game from the disk onto the SD card. Awesome. Pretty much. Backups. It's, it's pretty simple once you get all the pieces and combine them onto your SD card and start right. downloading. So how do we set it all up? Okay, so the first thing you have to do is install the Wii Disk Dumper mm -hmm. um, from the Wii Dump sd.dol that's included in your we dump sd 1.2 rar file great yeah it's time Rars, to keep in mind DOL files, gotcha. <laughs> so you make this new folder on your sd under the apps directory which you made back in the homebrew channel mm -hmm. make that um directory all right hold on i'm fuck I've it's okay it it's okay yeah we're in an overlay i'll just oh, pick it are? up oh yeah. yeah we are okay yep. No, no, no. I'm in an keep overlay in post. <laughs> yeah, keep switching. Go go. use these cameras. Like That's good, though. Because we're looking at each other a lot, so feel free to just... I had something in my eye, and I was trying to ignore it. So I'll just pause for a second. Okay. Zan411 on Twitter. <laughs> All right. So after you create that Wii Dumper folder in your apps directory, you want to copy the Wii Dumper SD.dol file into the Wii Dumper folder directory. Mm -hmm. Blah, blah, blah. And then the second thing you want to get is the iOS 5.wad, which is also inside the Wii Dumper SD 1.2 RAR file. And to do that, you got to put a WAD manager folder in your apps directory and then copy the DOL file into your WAD manager directory. Copying the new folder in the root of your SD card called WAD, and make sure that's all lowercase. It's very important. I don't know why, but it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you copy the iOS5.wad file into the new WAD folder. All right? All right. Okay, so all that's pretty easy. Three files. Also, Darren figured out when we were trying to do this that you need to have um, images made. Yeah, an image.png. Yeah, or you need one for the wad and one for the dumper. So he just called one wad and one dumper. So they would show up on the homebrew channel whenever you bring it up. Right. In the homebrew channel, the way that it works basically is that you put um, uh, in the slash apps folder on your SD card, you have a folder for every particular homebrew application. Each of those homebrew applications uh, you need to rename to boot.dol. So the dumper one, reboot to boot.dol. Same thing with the wad manager. Um, the, it, and also, every application that you've called boot.dol inside of their particular folder needs two supporting files. You need an image.png and you need a meta.xml. Yeah. yeah, and it's a really easy XML file to edit. Just take a look at any of the other homebrew applications as an yeah, example. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You just so you can just copy over. It yeah, it's kind of like you, you know, copying HTML from a really cool website. XML back is in like GeoCity <laughs> days. <laughs> not that I would know anything about copying of other people. Of course not. Hey, we're HTML. in the 2009 episode, <laughs> not the 95. All right. Oh, that's so right. Moving God, on. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, so we've got everything set up on our yeah, SD card. Yeah, you have card. everything on your SD card. You're good we've to go. A, we've got a mod our Wii, though. For this all to work with the WAD manager, like Kinda, tweak our yeah. firmware with the iOS. So you got to stick your SD card into mm -hmm. your Wii, and you got to include your, um, you know, Smash Brothers CD or DVD, whatever, yeah, yeah. whatever game drive. you decide to play, whatever one you want to. Like back Excite up. Truck. Yes. 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 Anyway, the cool thing about it on the website that mm -hmm. you can get all this information from, it shows you a list of the ones that are supported the best with the Dolphin emulator. Gotcha. And of yeah. course, this is very early days into this kind very of emulation. Very early. So there are some games not quite working so well, but then there are some ones that work great. So, you know, that's why so we're playing with Smash Brothers. So you just got to, you know, look through the ga game list and see which one you want to try All right. out. So what do we do now? Okay, so you got your SD card in your disk, in your Wii. Mm -hmm. So the first thing you're going to do is um, you're going to boot up your homebrew channel, and you're going to go into the, I think, the WAD. Um, basically, you're just going to load it up, and it's going to, I think it restarts your Wii. Yeah, it pretty much walks you through the installation of these different WADs. If you're not familiar with WADs, I did a little bit of research on this. Basically, uh, 
this goes into the territory where we don't venture too much, but basically with this type of uh, installation manager, you can install these WAD files that could perhaps be uh, virtual console games that you know maybe you didn't buy. Um, that's not what we're looking to do here today, but you know, just an Something FYI. To keep in mind. That's, I think that's that. Anyway, whatever. Politics <laughs> of homebrew. You know how it is. Oh um, yeah. So we've you got. Should read some of their forms. So once <laughs> we have it patched, right, and, it, and we've got the iOS five installed with our WAD manager, right. it reboots our Wii. What do we do now? So now you're going to go back into the homebrew channel. You're going to go to the dumper mm -hmm. program. Once you load that up, it's going to give you a bunch of choices. It's, it's going to say um, select your DVD type, whether you have a single layer, a dual layer, or you're using a GameCube disc that you want to back up. Mm -hmm. Each one's different. So I suggest going online and basically just like Googling Super Smash Brothers layer yeah. DVD. And it'll tell you uh, Super Smash Brothers is single yeah, or dual. I think, I think it's, it's dual. Really easy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that one is yeah. uh, dual. Now, um, you said we're using a 2 gig SD card here. If we were right. on the 4.0 firmware, we would have the SDHC support and we'd be able to do, you know, to, to back up You'd be able to more. back up a whole Right, because we could pop like an 8 <laughs> gig card in there and probably do it in all one thing. But the thing is, it's a dual layer DVD. It's like 8, 9 gigs or something. So, right. Um, so we're going to be doing different parts, basically. Um, so each one has a set part number, every different kind of game. Mm -hmm. uh, for our Super Smash Brothers, it has six different parts. So we're going to end up having to six, take the first part. 1.5 gig parts. Yeah, 1.5 right. gigs. So you also have to choose how many gigs you or how many megs you want to download. Mm -hmm. Well, fit, you yeah, know, yeah, what'll fit on your card? 1,500 megs. Gotcha. Whatever. Yeah. So you choose all those different things, and then you just start the download. I do have to mention it takes a long time. <laughs> For the first one. Right, we did it, uh, we started at 4.30, how yeah. long did it take? It took about two, about two hours, hours for the 1,500 megs. So that's to the first of the six SD parts. So, so this is something that you would probably do like over oh, over the course of a couple of, day, of days or yeah, something. Over the course of a day, you, you know, probably get it done, yeah. Get onto your computer <laughs> and start Googling and playing and But hacking. you know, if, if you got a slow internet connection, that's how long it'd probably take to torrent it anyway. And Winners don't do wares. So <laughs> that's cool. And, and hey, that's for a dual but this layer, is the right? Fun way. For a GameCube disc, you could probably do that in one part, is oh, the yeah. cool thing. GameCube, GameCube disc. discs are a lot, lot smaller. Yeah. So those definitely do not take as much time. I don't know if we're going to be playing those in HD, though. So anyway, probably not. that is how we get those that's files. That's how we back it up, and that's basically as far as we are right now. Okay. N after you get those different parts onto your SD card, what you're going to want to do is stick it back into your computer, mm -hmm. copy over the part that you had just got, and then make sure to you know erase it on your SD card so you can copy the next part. Yeah, free up some space, and yeah. then start the you know lather, rinse, repeat. Do it six times for a dual layer, three times for a single layer, one. And hopefully for next game. week we'll be able to combine all the different parts for Super Smash Brothers and get it working on my computer in 720p. I'm excited to be playing some. See, dude, see when Matt comes ass. back, we'd be like, Matt, dude, I don't care. You What's know, wrong Xbox with the week? Into I, HD. I, I don't know why I don't like the week because it's just playing, you know, need HD. Two thousand dollar gaming rig to do it. So I'll throw up the links and all the information on this. I'll even get you a really nice step by step on how to do this on my blog at snubsy.com, and it'll also be in the show notes. Woohoo! And if you have any questions or feedback, you can email me, snubsy at hack5. Rock on. Org. What's right. up with you? I Ubuntu? Have been, okay, so here it is, nine, uh, it's 5x09, right? So yep. we are over two months into the fifth season, and I've been all Linux this entire season up until this particular episode. I'm rocking Chrome <laughs> in my windows here. But, oh, oh, saving grace, I got... Ubuntu running inside of Windows. Let me let me uh, let me minimize the hack socket. Let me just turn off the hack socket for just a moment here and, and they won't show mind. you guys what I'm talking about. All right, so I'm in Windows here, as you can see. You know all my fun apps and whatnot. Yeah. But I also have Ubuntu running inside of my machine, and it's not like in a VM where it's inside of its own little box. It's integrating with the uh, with the rest of my you know with my Windows window manager basically. I've got Nibbles here from GNOME, and I've got you know I can go in here and launch you know the different applications and whatnot. And this is what's called Portable um, Ubuntu for Windows. Okay. And there's not a whole lot of documentation on this. It's, it's pretty sparse. <laughs> there's usually not when it comes to this kind of stuff. Well, no. There's <laughs> usually like a ton of documentation, and it's all in Greek. Uh, yeah. There we go. <laughs> but, uh, but it's a little sparse on documentation. And it's, i got to preface this by saying that it's not 
technically a portable app in, in the most uh, pure sense of the, of the term because it does require you to run it as administrator. Uh, you do have to touch your file system because you have to install a driver. Okay. Um, but other than that, it's basically your, your, you know, you can bring Ubuntu with you. I've got it on an 8 gig SD card here and it's, wow. it's only, it's like 1.8 gigs uncompressed. It's like a 400 meg download from, uh, you know, portable ubuntu.sourceforge.net. And it's kind of cool the way it works because it runs everything in a single Windows process. Uh, I mean, to run it, you pretty much just download it. You double click on this little batch file here. And this batch file is really interesting. What it, what wait, wait, so you're running, you're running an OS inside of an OS, but mm -hmm. it's not a VM and you can run them both well, at the same time? Well, it is a VM. That's, that's the thing. But it's not your traditional VM. That's what I'm going to show you. So it, it runs this, this tray thing here. And if I actually take a look at this tray, that's uh, cool. Tray run, and we can see here's you know here's it, like when you boot up, you get your regular boot screen up in here. But you know they make it easy, they minimize that, so you don't have to mess right. with that. It runs <laughs> it runs as a single process, and the way that this works is we're using uh, what's called cooperative Linux, or sometimes called co Linux. Okay. It's a unique VM. It, um, it it basically allows a guest operating system to have complete control over the host machine. It's, it's fully privileged, uh, which is not like how your typical VMs work, like VMware and whatnot. Um, so basically what it does is it melds both the Windows NT kernel and the Linux kernel together so that they work cooperatively on the same hardware. That's badass. Yeah, and that's why <laughs> you need to install that driver. Um, to get this running, you, you do have to have the co-Linux driver, which does have to touch your, uh, your Windows system a little bit but um, and, and that's why you need admin but that driver basically allows the host operating system in this case Windows to work cooperatively with Linux yeah nice but you know as a 400 meg download if you know if you've ever played with something like Sigwin uh, if you've ever yeah run, yeah I was gonna ask you about that yeah if you ever run uh, you know uh, Linux in a VM uh, you're looking for something simple you just want you know cuz I've got a bunch of you you were talking about a, a security application, a, a screenshot app. Oh, yeah. And you were like, it's only for, for Linux right now. And I'm yeah. like, oh, we'll just load it up in, uh, I don't know, VM. And Those, um, well, now, uh, if you had this, stamp. yeah, if you had this, you could just go ahead and, uh, you know, load up your Ubuntu here. You could, you know, go right into the terminal and you'd be all set. So, cool. you know, I'm excited okay. to have best of both worlds for when I do have <laughs> to be on the Windows side for Chrome. Yeah. But other than that, I'm happy with Ubuntu native. You know, Sounds pretty nice. Looks like it's running really smoothly and everything. Uh, like actually, no. I do oh, have to. Well, I mean, my only testing with this has been on my netbook. So the Atom processor, it, it takes a little while, right? To, it, once everything gets going, it, it runs okay. Oh, like my, my Nibbles okay. game here takes a little while, but now my red little nibbly guy can totally get that diamond and it'll be awesome. Um, <laughs> what's important to note here, though, is that if you're running Windows Vista or XP64, you're not going to have a whole lot of fun with this because it's not for 64-bit Windows. Aww. It just won't run. So anyway, hopefully the developers will, uh, I mean, th this is, it was released in September of last year. Documentation oh, okay. just came out in February. So hopefully more progress will be done in this project. But I'm excited Dude. to, you know, see how this goes. Sounds pretty cool. Yeah. I want to play with it. All right. Can I play with it? Yes. <laughs> but uh, not until we find out what's going on with our LAN party. Yes, first we are going to play Gold Tag for Doom 2. It's on April 25th, and we're going to be playing at 3 p.m. Eastern EST time in the U.S. The server's up all month at doom.hack5.org, and you can also check out all the details and get any downloads that you might need at hack5land.squarespace.com. And that's where you can hit us up and let us know if there's any custom wads you think we should be playing. <laughs> we're going to be playing with the, uh, the, the, the default Doom 2 wad. Um, I got links up on the post there about how to get it through Steam or, or Google or whatnot. Um, but, you know, hit us up. It's all month long or uh, come in on the 25th. I'm excited about playing some custom walls. Yeah, I'm excited to play, to play too. It's very and exciting. And where can they get all those details? Hack5land.squarespace.com. Rock on. I right. already said that, man. You cool. just weren't listening to me. No, I was. I was. I was just he actually using that, that as that a... All the time. No, I was totally... Just doesn't listen to me. I was building it up as... I'm all like talking about Squarespace right here. Mm -hmm. And he's just like... I was trying uh, to get like a where nice do you little, find the details? little, little uh, segue to our plug for, we're going to take a break and <laughs> thank one of our awesome sponsors, Squarespace. We'll be right back. Stay tuned.
Squarespace is a truly innovative publishing system that's both powerful and easy to use. Anyone looking to create a blog, portfolio, or any kind of website should give it a shot. Their web publishing system allows you to instantly create amazing looking websites without the need for complicated software or code. Choose from tons of their great themes and tweak to your heart's content, all with the click of a mouse right from your browser. Squarespace plans start at $8 a month, and as a Hack5 fan, you get 10% off the life of your service at squarespace.com when you sign up using code HACK5. All right, you guys don't know this, but living in the hack house, you get a whole bunch of crap in the mail all the time. Darren's got this Fawn 2.0, which, yeah, it looks pretty cool. And this, what is this? It's a, a Shiva. Box? It's a Shiva plug. Shiva plug. Yeah. That sounds like a creature from Final Fantasy. No, this this guy's like a badass wall wart computer. There's oh, a computer. it's a computer. This is a computer. Okay. I this was going to say, wow, it looks like a bunch of ports. No, nah, okay. it's, it's, uh, it's, it's <laughs> like an overgrown iPod that plugs into the wall and so has... So uh, what does it, what's it do? What's well, this computer do? It runs Linux. What else would it do? Linux. I should have guessed. Yeah. This is the Go Shiva figure. plug from uh, Marvel Semiconductor. And uh, this was pointed out to me by so many people. Uh, this great article over at Linux Devices. Yeah, and I've heard they've been in the news a lot lately. Yeah, this is a really fun upcoming device that uh, a lot of some some manufacturers are starting to use. It's an open device. It's an open platform. Uh, it, it you know, and um, it's really like low power. It it's got a decent chip in it, right? So it's got like a 1.2 gigahertz ARM chip in it. So okay, you know, a little bad. bit of horsepower there. Yeah. Only taken, did I mention only taken? That's four. Five watts of power. <laughs> Wait, and, uh, what? Five watts? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a little, Holy crap. little wall board. Dude, this is, this is what you would replace like, okay, so we actually had a laptop. When we were doing the, uh, the missile cam, the, the missile thing where you could shoot Kirby with lasers and missiles and stuff, we had an entire laptop dedicated to running yeah. a Java uh, application. And this is what would replace it if I were sane. So I just, you know, got one of these, and I absolutely love it. Um, so like I said, by Marvel, they run, run between $50 and $100. This is actually the developer's kit, so you can pick one of these up right now uh, for about 100 bucks. Or um, if you are like a manufacturer, you can totally get like, you know, and want to buy these in bulk and stuff, you can get them down to like 50 bucks a piece, which wow. for an embedded device, kind of cool. Yeah. So... Um, They've got an API for those interested in doing a lot of uh, development with them. I'm actually playing with that right now, trying to see what kind of cool stuff I can come up with. So no hacks today. No hacks today, but I just <laughs> wanted to kind of introduce the hardware because I just got both of these in. Um, I'm having a lot cool. of fun playing with them, and I'm just kind of coming up with some ideas of what can be done with them. So, for example, the Shiva plug, I've got you know USB 2. I've got my 10100 Ethernet. Uh, on the developer edition, I actually get a nice little USB for direct access to the serial port. Oh yeah, that's some good stuff there. <laughs> um, unfortunately, no Wi-Fi, but I do have USB, so I can do that. I'm I'm trying to think of like how I can integrate it with like the Hack House or make some home automation stuff with it. Already, some uh, some companies like Cloud Engine uh, has a device called the Proto Plug, which uses this, and I think we saw that at CES, and it's basically. A, uh, a web accessible data store. So you'd like plug a hard drive into it and you could access oh. that over the internet. Yeah, yeah. There's also um, the, uh, the cloud plug, which is another one that's, that's a NAS. So you just plug this into your network, plug a USB hard drive into it, bam, uh, done. And then there's the HIP server, which is a media server for you know, all your videos and stuff like that. Very I don't cool. know, there's a lot of potential with this. It's a fun little project because it has, it seems like it has enough power to actually do something. So right now, maybe I'll just use it for the uh, missile thing, bring that back. Or I may use it as the host to drive the tank, uh, the, the Hack House oh, rover. Yes, we still need to finish that project. Yeah, <laughs> so I, I, although I'm thinking about a beagle board for that. Anyway, regardless, um, fun. this looks like a fun embedded Linux device that I'm going to be playing with soon. Um, so that guy's over at Global Scale. Yeah, that you can you can buy one of those over at Global Scale Technologies, the retailer. It's a it's a, uh, a Marvel device, and and you know Marvel has a great track record of doing good devices. Um, the other one is the Fawn 2.0. This is actually a Fawn 2.0 beta, and if you look at this guy here, he looks very similar to if you're familiar with a Fawn Plus, 
just like that. This is the Fawn 2202, and uh, I saw, you know, you've got your dual Ethernet here. Uh, it's 8 megs of flash. You've got an Atheros 180 megahertz chipset on there, and, uh, you know, Red Boot, all that fun stuff, 32 megs of RAM. What you would expect from something like a Fawn Plus, but the real big addition here is right here, you actually have a USB port, and that's what's most important. And that is a USB 2 port, and uh, I gotta say, this is the first device to come out of Fawn that I don't immediately want to unlock <laughs> and strip and, and put a bunch of, you know, like do, put, roll my own with. Uh, Why is that? Well, Fawn's doing something a little innovative here. They're actually, maybe they're listening to their community and actually listen, you know, seeing what's being done with their devices uh, because you can actually do some plugins with this. Uh, for example, there's a Dyn DNS plugin, so you can, oh, you know, yeah, okay. you've got a, if you don't have static IP, that's nice. You can do yeah. backups, just like with the Shiva plug, you know, pop, the, pop a little hard drive on the network here and do some backups with it. Uh, with an audio, with a USB audio device, you can use this to stream audio to it and have it kind of like a cheap AirTunes. Um, <laughs> you can do network printer with it. You could do like a oh, webcam. That's, cool. that's exciting. And those are all just like, the Fawn plugins. There's also third-party plugins, like a uh, like a proxy plugin that allows you to proxy one of the interfaces. Uh, you can um, there's a, uh, a there's support for a couple of 3G cards. That's very exciting. So you've got a USB port here, right? Can you imagine running a pineapple on this, where it's got a USB for a 3G thing? So I just plug my BlackBerry right in over the USB. It tethers, and I've got like the ultimate, you know. You know, I get like a pineapple where I don't even have to have a computer <laughs> nearby to get on some Wi-Fi. I don't even uh, have to depend on Wi-Fi being in the area. Love these it prospects. It wouldn't be Hack 5 without fawns and pineapples. Uh, well, I think this one might end up being a vegetable. Or oh, okay. Or primate, <laughs> you know. Something like that. Definitely not a mammal. Anyway, <laughs> so those are the two embedded uh, Linux devices that I'm playing with. Uh, and, you know, $50 for the Fawn 2. It's about to come out. This is a beta unit, so... Uh, cool. Had it for a little bit. Um, Going to be doing some fun hacks with it later. And what I want to hear from you guys is what you would do if you had, uh, like I mentioned, those capabilities. If you had a Shiva plug, if you had a Fawn 2, what kind of crazy stuff would you like to put together? Kind of inspire us. And uh, we have a special yeah. thread for that right up there on the forums, hack5.org slash forums. So anyway, enough about Linux embedded devices. <laughs> what I really want to know about is, is uh, how Facebook can recognize my face when I'm looking all pretty. Facial recognition on Facebook, finally. Isn't that awesome? I mean, that just sounds cool. I love the new Facebook. Okay, so there's, there's this team over at face.com. Mm -hmm. They are working on creating a whole bunch of facial recognition type programs for all over the place, all over the internet. Right now, the first one they did is this application on Facebook called Photo Finder. And it's this perfect little toy for anybody who has like a ton of pictures and they don't feel like tagging themselves in them or they have lots of friends and they have no clue where all those pictures are and they don't even want to look through all the tags of them to mm -hmm. find out if there's anything bad in there that they, they don't want to be involved in or mm -hmm. anything like that. So you can actually go through and let it load up all of the faces that it's found of you and then find out if any of them aren't you or if any of them you don't want to be tagged. <clears throat> for mine, the first thing it saw is these 118 auto tags. Mm -hmm. These are just ones that it found out there that either weren't tagged or they were, but I didn't know about them. So these are photos of you that weren't tagged as, as being you. Now, are On they, Facebook, are, yeah. Were they your photos? Were they your friend's photos? How does um, it find these? They could be both. Could they be like anyone's photos? They're, from what I'm understanding here, it's just your friends. Okay. So, so it's not, you know, I can't use it to crawl the internet and like find pictures yeah, of anybody yeah. I want. Okay. Like, I, you know, I accept a ton of fan requests and lots of viewers there you go. friend me on Facebook. So, if so somebody I have took lots a picture and you were in it like at a conference or something and somebody, had, yeah. yeah, there you go. That's and, cool. You know, I'll it'll see, it. it'll, it'll find my smile in there and it'll be like, oh, that's Shannon. So it, it it'll tag good? it and it'll say, it'll give me this little question at the bottom. You know, it'll say 92% accuracy on this photo says that it it's probably you do you want to check it as you or do you want to close it and say it's not you okay. now if you accept it it just says accepted Ta -da. Uh -huh. now if you decide to close one and you say that's not me you can pr press the X and it says um, 
it gives you this choice. It either says it's unknown or it says um, I know who this is. So you can choose from your friends and say, oh, yeah, yeah, that's That's you know, so-and-so, so, and then it knows. So there was this one picture in here that was my sister. It thought it was me. Kind of your funny. Your sister doesn't look that much like you. But I know. She's okay. orange and I'm white. <laughs> you couldn't white balance off your sister. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to go in there and press the X and say, oh, I know who this is. This is Brittany. Mm -hmm. So I did that, and then it never appeared again. It disappeared from my list. So it learns. Yeah. That's really cool. You know, Apple came out with a feature in the new iPhoto that's very similar to this. And it's kind of interesting to see how, as fac facial recognition technology just gets more prevalent, how we start to oh, see I love it. the applications like this in social networking. It's so weird. Like, it's you, you can find this stuff you know, in casino security systems, but I've never seen this on the internet See, somewhere. that's what we need is a, secu is a security, you know, a security system in the casino that's going to say, oh, hey, that's Shannon. Let's pull up her, pro her Facebook profile. Facebook profile. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> so, yeah, network of all of her friends and then scan for her friends in the casino. Do all sorts of crazy stuff with this. Another interesting thing about this is while it's going through all your friends and all of your pictures, it has this little tab up here that says, who's this? Right. So it has all these photos under your friends and your photos. Who are these that ha It has no clue who these people are. So you can go through here and help the, t help the application learn. Ah. You can go through here and start tagging people. And then over, over time, it'll learn. And it'll be able to tag those people in future photos. And then you can also add yourself to this watch list so anytime new photos are added onto it it'll pay attention to those so if somebody were to upload a photo and that, that it potentially had you they'd send you a little note and say hey we think there's a photo of yeah, you that it, hasn't been it, tagged yeah photo finder it'll, it'll even email you and it'll be like hey i think i found a hundred more photos of you do you want to check these it, out now i now i understand the name it lives up to its name i am yeah. the concept is great it finds your photos there we go it's pretty cool i so really like can, it can we just go ahead and sign up and start using this app? Right now, it is in alpha. You know, it, they say there's a lot of bugs. I haven't found very many bugs right now. It's a little bit slow when it's first loading up all your photos, but that's about it. Yeah. Um, so they're very welcoming. You know, I signed up for the um, the press alpha, gotcha, just so I could show it off to everybody else. And they were very welcoming. They gave me an alpha well, test. Well, you know, when you're pressed, they, they kind of are. Oh, yeah, and they said I could share this with 10 friends. Oh, mm. rock on. Well, then have people hit you up on Twitter. They should add you as friends on Twitter, and they should give away <laughs> invites. Subs. There you go, at S-N-A-U-B-S. Cool. Let me tell you guys about trivia, right? Let, you want to move on just do some trivia sure. stuff to find out what's going on here? Um, I hear so monkeys are involved. There, there might be some monkeys. Now, <laughs> Let's recap. Last week's trivia question was, what instant message protocol developer features this quote on his homepage? If it is not logic, it's magic. And if it's not magic, it's female logic. Oh, you know please. you love it. All right, whatever. <laughs> anyway, um, that was correctly answered by our very own hack stalker, Italiano40. And um, he emailed in to let us know that it was Jarko I yeah, I I'm not going to try to pronounce it. Anyway, it's Yay, the creator Italiano. of IRC. So we're hooking him up. The creator of IRC said that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's on his homepage. Jarko Oikarinen. Yeah, yeah we're, that's bad. Oh, well. Whatever. Sorry, <laughs> dude. Anyway, mad props for creating IRC. Come over to hackhouse.com and see your very own IRC. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but we're hooking up him with, uh, with an awesome DVD by Ashley Schwartow. The um, Hackers Are People 2 DVD. Wonderful DVD. Yeah. So we think he's really going to like that. This week, though, we don't have a trivia question per se. We what? actually have a, a Did you content. forget again? Uh, you forgot, didn't you? No. no I, I, I didn't forget. <laughs> um, we actually have a special contest going on. Ah, and okay. And this is uh, a contest to build the very best uh, monkey. You've seen the monkey animation. You've seen the... Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, we doing we're doing a contest to to find uh, to see if you can build the best monkey wallpaper the best interceptor monkey wallpaper and uh, love to see what you guys create so I've actually gone ahead and put the source documents out there the Photoshop files and whatnot so that you guys can put together your own uh, monkey wallpapers and submit them to the Hack Five forums under Community Images you'll see a place there and then next week we will uh, choose one of the best and you guys will win an awesome fun prize. And uh, this is from Tamara, and this is from SockMonkey.net. It is a, uh, a sock monkey kit. And I know awesome. you guys saw the, uh, she actually made the D monkey. This is, I mean, it's like a spitting image, right? <laughs> so it really is. It looks his, a lot like you. And his jeans even have like a, like a Velcro so it can unzip his, I don't know why that is. <laughs> 
to take the monkey's pants off. Well, you know, but, uh, you might want to change his clothes. He's even got like a little, you know. Uh, oh, you guys match. You, we match. Wow. Don't we match, Dave? Paul? That's just think? amazing. Are we great over here? Yeah. So <laughs> anyway, I want to thank Tamara for hooking me up with the epic D monkey. And, um, and she's given us uh, one of the sock monkey kits so you can build your own. Uh, so, you know, just get involved in that contest. And you know what? If you want a, uh, a, to build a sock monkey of your own, you can go ahead uh, over to her website, sockmonkey.net. And I think she's got a special thing for Hack5 viewers at hack5.sockmonkey.net. So, awesome. yeah. Thank you so much, Tamara. And that's how you can get involved with this week's contest. Now, coming up next, we're going to be taking a look at uh, a roundup of Doom Source ports. And uh, also, we're going to be taking a ton of your viewer questions. Lots and lots of so questions. So stay tuned. But first, we'd like to thank one of our awesome sponsors, GoDaddy. Your website visitors, prospects, and customers are wary of websites and online businesses that aren't what they claim to be and worried that their personal and financial information might fall into the wrong hands. Turn your visitors' concerns into a competitive advantage with the ironclad protection of a GoDaddy.com secure certificate. And if you use code HACK5, that's H-A-K-5, you can get $10 off a $40 order or more. Some restrictions apply. See the website for details and get your piece of the internet at GoDaddy.com. Hey guys, all right, you remember how last week we had Doom 2 Skull Tag by Darren? All right, we've been getting a ton of feedback the entire week. I swear to God, I've never seen so many emails about one freaking segment, but everybody loved it. So, what's up this week? Well, what's okay, I, I, gotta, I gotta put the final chapter in the Doom thing because you know me, I'm crazy about <laughs> Doom, and uh, I'll stop talking about it here when I just go ahead and finish it with this chapter and do my roundup yes. of all of the excellent Doom source ports that have been sent to me lately. I swear, it seems like everybody on, on the Twitters and everywhere have been saying Everyone's that Everyone's been talking about your well, Doom yeah, stuff. There's, there's a lot of good Doom <laughs> stuff to go check out. I mean, Doom fans are fanatic, man. If you go and check out uh, doomworld.com. <laughs> yeah, see, Paul's giving me the pound there because he loves the Doom on the iPod reference season two for that. But uh, doomworld.com is the place, doom.wikia. Anyway, so let me go ahead and give you guys uh, uh, gathering a little roundup here of my top Doom source port picks. Okay. okay. First is Doom Legacy. This is actually the first Doom source port that I've ever played. It hasn't been updated since 2006, but is very feature rich. Uh, 32 player TCP IP, OpenGL support. Looks great, kind of solid. I like it. Um, but, dude, Doomsday. I had no idea about Doomsday. This was actually sent to me from Brian W. Uh, Doomsday at doomsdayhq.com is the place to get it. And it is, um, it's an engine. It's compatible with Doom, with Hexen, with Heretic. And it's, uh, here's the best part. For Windows, Mac, and Linux. I know I said in the last episode that Skulltag was for Windows, Mac, and Linux. It's actually only for Windows and Linux. This one is Windows, Mac, and Linux. And dude, oh my god, it is the most gorgeous Doom uh, source port I've ever played. It is absolutely yeah. phenomenal. The uh, the plugin support that they have for 3D models. I, I Actually, as soon as I loaded this up, I actually ran through and, and played uh, Doom E1, M1, or I'm sorry, uh, the entire episode one. Uh, you know, and did a little run through beat it, got about 85% secrets on most everything. So, <laughs> you know, I still got it, I think, somewhat. But, um, but dude, it is gorgeous. Uh, I really love that one. Now, another really cool one that was sent in from Richard Gardner is Classic Doom 3, or Doom 3 Classic, however you want to put it. Dude, okay. this thing is a basically a re-envisioning of Doom uh, for the uh from for basically doom one and only the first episode so all of the great Ro john romero maps um the star levels if you will uh re-envisioned using the doom 3 engine so it's not a source port in the sense that you're taking the wad file from the old doom if you don't have doom one or two that's fine the rest of these you need to have a, a legit wad from doom one or two or the shareware um this, all you need is Doom 3. I just, you know, I've got a copy off Steam. Their new version supports the Steam. It's a, it's a great little mod that just, you know, you load up your Doom, choose the mods, and, cool. and, and get going. And it's really interesting to see how people basically re-envision those maps. Because, I mean, you didn't have a whole lot of polys back then. 
hell, you, you couldn't even have layers on top of layers. I mean, so it's, it's really cool to see. It's basically in the spirit of Doom, but with the Doom 3 engine. And I've got to say, like, I was playing on Nightmare, and I've never had it kick my ass so hard. Like, that is a hard Doom. Um, so an interesting re-envisionment. Also, couldn't do this roundup without mentioning Eternity Engine. Now, Eternity Engine is an evolution of a thing called um, Man's Be or Marine's Best Friend, which was <laughs> a, a, a mod, uh, which was a source port where the Doom guy actually had a dog that was with him and like helped him out and stuff. I love video games where you get like a little dog or a little oh like, yeah, like Table know, Two, like in WoW where you had a little creature that followed you. You remember what that yeah. when you were level seventy, right? <laughs> She's never no. played a day of WoW in her life. Um, I, I, I played enough to actually create a character, and then my old computer pooped out on me, and I took it as an act of God. It was. It was an act of God, or the spaghetti <laughs> monster, or the something. Some, monster. some greater <laughs> being saying, you know. Saying, you should not yes, play this game. And I was not. like, okay, I'm not going to play it. What were we talking about again? Doom, right. Doom. So Eternity, <laughs> Eternity Engine is basically the purest Doom. It's the most backwards compatible with Boom. It's, uh, it, it'll run you demos. And um, I think it's, it's, it's a good one to take a look at. Uh, but, you know, the other ones are also especially Doomsday, dude. Doomsday. Oh. So, but anyway, remember, we're playing Skull Tag, which is also just as I mean, there's five Dooms right there for you. So get your Doom on and, uh, <laughs> and enough with the Doom already, right? All so right, we're going to put it to bed for a while unless, of course, I can get a Fawn 2 to run Doom. But, I mean, aside from that... I got a USB port. I could put a USB monitor. <laughs> ah, so one of those is CS. Okay. Tell me where I can get my my game fix now, because I because I got it. Where you can I get your Doom? <laughs> yeah. Well, I I need to play a game that's not from 1993. Where can I play current games? Gamefly. Okay, Gamefly. Let me just say we've been using this for like I don't know how how long have been we've been using this like two months, couple of weeks. The dude, it's 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 about, about a, a month? month or so. Yeah, yeah. It's awesome. They just, they send you video games. It's great. It's amazing. It's like Netflix of video games. Anybody that sends you video games in the mail so cool. deserves a hug. <laughs> All right. Well, let me tell you about Gamefly. Gamefly is the largest online video game rental service and offers you a choice of over 6,000 new and classic titles across all consoles and handhelds. With plans starting at $15.95 a month, Gamefly members can rent one to four games at a time and keep them for as long as they like. There are no late fees, no due dates, and shipping is always free. Once you're done playing a game, send it back and Gamefly will send you the next available game on your list. If you really like the game you're playing, simply click Keep It on the Gamefly website and the game is yours at a discounted price. Gamefly will even mail you the case and manuals free of charge. Hack5 fans get a two-week free trial when they go to Gamefly.com slash Hack5. Some restrictions apply. See the website for details and get your Gamefly on over at Gamefly.com. Rock on. Slash hack five. Also, I want to promo TRS real quick and let you know. Remember last year when TRS was at the Webbies in 08? And, uh, yeah. Yeah. And, and <laughs> yeah, Alex Albrecht gets on stage, uh, you know, sans pants and says, uh, you know, you only get five words. So he says, has, anyone, say? has anyone seen my pants? Yes. Yes. Excellent oh, stuff. So funny. Well, check it out, right? Uh, this year on the April 14th TRS, they have an exclusive announcement of the nominees for the, the, the awards at the Webby's this year. The, 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 the what? The, 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 the awards this year for the Webby's. Uh, it's going to be very exciting, so be sure to watch that and see uh, what internet TV shows are nominated. Um, I'm not going to cross it. And which ones aren't? <laughs> the which ones aren't will be drinking to that. <laughs> so anyway, check that episode out. It's going to be great. In addition to that exciting news, uh, uh, Jeff, Dan, uh, Alex, they are going to be checking out Seth Rogen's new, um, oh, yeah. new movie, Observe and Report. I want to see that. And checking out a couple of huge releases on the PS3 and the Wii. And you know Ooh. what? The PS3 and the Wii, they need some love, too. So, ah, check out some TRS at, uh, at uh, revision3.com and uh, Totally Rad Show. Bam! There you love go. me some TRS. Yes. <laughs> well, we have a ton of... A ton of questions. We do. We have so much week. feedback. We we um we picked some of the best stuff, and of course, you guys know that you can send your questions into feedback at hack5.org, questions at hack5.org. You can just click on the contact page up there at the top. Anyway, uh, this first one. All right, can I take this one? Yeah, go can ahead. I take, take this take one. The first one. Okay, so. So I already okay. So uh, so I got this on Twitter, and it's from kzap333, and he writes. 
Uh, someone reminded me it's technically not a LAN party as it's not local, but I wouldn't know what else to call it. I, I guess in reference to the Hack 5 LAN parties we do. Yeah, so I have a friend back at home, so he said the exact same thing, except the way he said it. He said, you know, you're wrong. You're wrong. It's not a LAN party. It's a WAN party. And you know it's what? WAN. It's you know what? It's over over the internet. That's it's what WAN. geeks do, man. We gotta be correct. And I was just like, be right. I was like, what? all right, listen up, right. listen up. If you tune into hexdockers.net <laughs> and watch us on the land day, land party, wow. you will see that we're having a land in the house hall downstairs. So I don't care <laughs> if it's land or WAN. I don't care. Who wants to go around saying, hey, this month's WAN party? That sounds like crap. I'm saying Add land, and you gotta deal party. with it. I'm done. Have a little wang party? No? It's, it's LAN. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to say WAN. <laughs> All right, but yes, we know. But maybe if we had a little VPN, I don't know, it'd still be a WAN. Uh, whatever. <laughs> All right. Okay, I'll write. So what's next? I'll, I'll read the next one. What? Twitch-tastic. Yeah, Twitch-tastic. <laughs> yeah. Writes us about jQuery, the best JavaScript library. Yes. Um, I talked about... Uh, Moo tools last week, and since then I've been getting a lot of uh, comments about different frameworks. One in particular, jQuery. Uh, and dude, just go over and check out the demos on jQueryUI.com. As a web developer, that has kind of like you know, I haven't really done a whole lot with the scene of web development for a while, and um, th now that I'm doing that stuff again, oh my god, it makes things so easy to use a nice framework. And jQuery is one of those you should check out. Um, so listen, if you guys have some other frameworks you think I should check out, let us know. Because Feedback. maybe we'll move around it for something that's good stuff. Uh, but I fell in love with jQuery easily. Next question. Fiji writes us about Adobe Spyry Framework. Yes. Another awesome JavaScript Ajax library. Like I said, you know, just like, and, and you know, I was playing with that one. And it's, it's pretty full featured. I like their accordions. I like some of their other widgets. Good stuff. So anyway. Um, but send us some more because I would love to see you know what other frameworks you web developers use. Uh, jQuery and and Adobe seem really cool, but you know more is always better. Uh, now Ron M writes in regarding the '90s show and he says, "Love the show. Uh, I missed one thing near the end of the show. You said to go to bbs.hack5.org." He says that we should make like a joke page or something where you, when you go to it. I think he's assuming when uh, you go to it in your <laughs> web browser with HTTP. Yeah, yeah like, I get it. Yeah. Aw. We will that's fill, cute. fill them in. <laughs> um, yeah, we have a bulletin board system where you know you go to your command prompt and you go to bbs.hack5.org and you can play video games and you can chat in the little IRC client. And, and, and we got like message boards and stuff. Anyway, it's Telnet so is much the key. Fun. Yes, Telnet. Dot what is it? Telnet, Telnet to bbs.hack5.org. Bbs. Hack That's it. So, yeah. I uh, killed the red dragon, no, by the way. Yeah, there's no watch out web server on there, but that's fine. It doesn't need one. Whatever. <laughs> so, Telnet over to that, and you will be just immersed in epic nostalgia. Uh, and finally, Fiji asks, in regards to our mentioned website redesign, if we would accept template mockups. Here's the thing. We are pretty much tied to WordPress. And yeah. It's good stuff. <laughs> so, I mean, all of our content is there. And the Everything. new template that we're working for with is excellent. Uh, so I guess we could kind of come up with you. It would take a look at your mockups as inspiration and whatnot. But unless you're actually a WordPress theme developer, we're already a little bit committed to, to, the, to the theme that we're doing. But that doesn't mean if you've got some input, some ideas of what you would want to see, um, you know, it's up there. Also, we have a good friend on the internet. His name is Fusion. Mm -hmm. And he just had his 22nd birthday. Happy birthday, Yay. Fusion. Happy birthday, Fusion. And with all that, we want to remind you guys that if you want to hit us up, I am Darren at Hack5.org. Shannon at Hack5.org or uh, Snubs. Paul, Matt, everybody at <laughs> Hack5.org, Evil Server. You can just email us all or you can hit us up. Just hit the contact on Twitter. button uh, on the homepage or, yeah, Twitter. You can also find us on Twitter at Snubs, Hack5Darren, Hack5Paul, and Hack5Matt or at hack 5 there you go. I think Kirby's on there too. Yeah, I think Kirby actually <laughs> Hack Five Kirby is on there, and you can, uh, or maybe we could source around and find ourselves a Twitter liaison to help us with the at Hack Five one. Regardless, and thank you so much for your donations. It helps us out a ton. If you feel like donating to the show, go over to hackfive.org/stickers, and we will 
greatly appreciate it, and we will happily send you some stickers to awesome. thank you for it. Well, it's just more than just stickers, and it's like stickers, autograph, and tattoos, and buttons, pin. and autograph photos, and it's just, it's getting a little ridiculous. It's a, it's I, a swag you, bag. It's just, yeah. <laughs> Maybe have fun. Anyway, awesome. with all of that, we hope you guys enjoyed the show. We're looking forward to hearing your feedback on it over at the forums and whatnot. So uh, until next week, when Matt comes back from the alien spaceship. Trust your techno lost! What you say? episode of Hack 5. This is your weekly dose of... Dosed. They <laughs> dosed her up. That's what they did. <laughs> Let's go! Let's see it. I'm so excited! It's the fun 2.0 in the Shiva Blood! This episode of Hack 5 is brought to you by Shannon's Feet. <laughs> Ew. No, I'm going to create a hack based upon a vegetable. I'm all set. It's gonna be the Wi-Fi okra. Whenever you are. It's okay. We'll mention that the cat's on the floor eating the script. <laughs> so <laughs> I love it. <laughs>